Hello fellow space engineers. As you can see I have my crosshairs on. That's why today we're going to talk about turrets. Turrets is a very familiar subject and I know many of you have already made your own. And there are some really really intricate and really well made designs out there in the workshop. But I figure I will give you my take on some of the problems that I run across and some of the innovations that I have developed. This right here, this quad gun, this kind of like a triple A turret, was my first creation. I made it uh, following the instructions that I found on YouTube. And as you can see, it has a light armor block as a base and only three landing gears to be able to lock in place. Uh, this is not a very good uh, system to lock a turret into a large ship or a station because it tends to be really wobbly and it's not that stable as I discovered later on. So the more landing gears you have the better. And also, well, I had to do it like this uh, because I wanted to install this tiny turret into a single large block. So basically I could retrofit it. In let's say like it's change uh, an automated turret with this manually controlled, you know, just for the fun of it, I could do it. So that was the main idea. Uh, this turret has a gimbal mount design. Let's see. Hmm. Wrong camera. Sorry. As I was saying, it has a gimbal mount. That means it can rotate almost all the way around. It has four gatling guns and it's really stable because the position of the gatling guns relative to the uh, elevation rotor. But that's one important thing to take into consideration when designing a turret. You need to know where the center of mass are for each individual piece. Now, this was the second creation. Uh, it was a collaboration with my friend Ludwig. I designed the mantlet and the main gun, and he designed the, uh, he designed the actual uh, turret body. Then I went on and added some features to make it look like a tank turret. Uh, I wanted the thing to look like a World War II German tank, or maybe slightly modernized. So it has a lotus hatch, it has a commander's cupola, they are fully functional, you can see the ammo boxes, uh, the loader's chair, and the commander. The commander can look around as if it was a tank. And now this is the gunner's position. And it has like a narrow slit to fire and shoot through. I mean aim through. It also has a coaxial machine gun. And the main gun. Well, it's not a main gun, it's just rockets. I'm having a bit of a lag here. Okay, the rocket. So, well, right now this turret is not fully functional. Let me show you why. This reloading system that I designed, you see, there's this hole right there. And that hole is supposed to be able to feed the gun by a collector block. Well, as you can see, there's no space here for a collector block. And there's no real way of reloading, you know, automatically reloading these rocket pods right now. I'm, I'm okay with that. I mean, they're meant for aircraft. They're kind of like Hydra rockets for helicopters. So, you know, they're manually loading. Somebody popped it up in a steam. Anyway, let's continue. <coughs> this is the improved design. And up to this point, the only kind of like self-reloading type that we can have, the self-reloading type of turret that we can have is an anti-aircraft turret or a gatling gun turret. I just added these two rockets here just for, you know, like an insurance against small craft. But what I want to show you here is the system that I devised. I have this modular base, as you can see, it's the same as in the tank turret. It has an ejector that ejects ammunition and a collector in the turret part that collects the ammunition. And also, you see those three connector blocks, sorry, the uh, conveyors, and they feed the gatlings. Now, this turret has 
all the rotors align one on top of the other. So I can have a relative, relatively good elevation on the pressure of the gun. It lags every time I shoot. Hmm. There. Whoa! Getting these horrible lag spikes. Anyway. Okay, let's move on. If it lets me. Okay. Mm, nope. Okay, it looks like it's stabilized now. Okay. So, this is a cutaway of the modular system that are designed for big ships. Basically, what you have down here will be the interior of the ship or the space station the ammunition compartment or the magazine it would feed the ammo to this connector block and it would shoot it up for this big turret to collect now this big turret I mean this this kind of setup this modular mount can take both this big ship turret and that small ship turret the only difference being that with the small ship turret you have one more step in the middle I mean, you have this base uh, portion in the middle, collecting the ammunition from the main ship and then shooting it to the uh, turret part. But in the big ship system, they're both compatible though. You don't have that, uh, let's say, like that middleman. So you just shoot out the ammunition from the ship directly into a turret. As you can see, you have a merge block here, so you can install big ship turrets and the locking mechanism for the small ship turrets is actually the landing gears and this connector block here. So as you can see, the small ship turret doesn't use, I repeat, it doesn't use the merge block, it only uses the connector, while the large ship turret only uses the merge block and uses the connector just to reload. So you have this passage here and the airlock and after you move through the blue door you are basically outside of the ship and you can get into the turret through this uh, corridor here so in an earlier video I mentioned that this is the siege turret I call it siege turret because it's not really fast so it's not meant to actually you know shoot at fast targets more like to shoot at space stations and other large or slow moving ships and if you want to reload it, you have to basically reset it. So you move it all the way forward, let's say, well, let's say zero degrees. And then you elevate the gun to the maximum elevation. So the actual ammunition follows a straight line and it gets collected here. It has to be done without any kind of artificial gravity though. Now moving on. I should actually name this one the Siege Turret. This design is meant to be installed on the underbelly of the carrier that I'm designing. It's kind of like a bombardment turret. It has the same system of reloading. There will be a connector block down there, uh, shooting ammunition, and then it gets collected here. As you can see, it's a more open design. It's not meant to, you know, to be in the direct line of combat, and it has this feature of rotation. With Q and E, you know, you can rotate all the way around, you can elevate, and you can move left and right. So it gives you like a, let's say like a half hemisphere, sorry, a half sphere, so an hemisphere, firing arc. And it has four rocket launchers. I mean, it's more powerful, but it's uh, less armored. Okay, moving on. So, what is this thing? This is an evolution of that uh, bombardment turret. So, you know, for those situations in which, like, the only way to make sure is, you know, having to nuke the entire side from orbit, 
this is the turret that you would use. It makes use of this newly, um, the new upgrade for the game that adds these uh, controllable uh, thrusters um, without the need of being in a cockpit in them. So let me show you how it works. There we have the game's most famous target, the red ship. As you can see, it's very wobbly, so I'm working on it. And what you do... Let's go to the external view. And there, that's fine. What you do is you actually power on the torpedoes, or the, let's call them nukes, just for the fun of it. You power them on, and then you release them. As you can see, one of them flew off. Well, that's why uh, I, I, I actually decided to not to add any uh, gyroscopes to them. I did a test in which uh, actually I added some gyroscopes and the way they flew straight forward, like in a straight line. But you know, people say that gyroscopes are expensive and there's no really like a realistic way of making them in survival if you're just gonna waste them, so that's why I decided to make it like that. Anyway, maybe in, a, in a, another video I would add some gyroscopes to show you. Either way, as you can see the damage here is um, devastating basically took let's say like a big portion like one fourth of the actual ship although functionality wise the ship is still flyable and that would lead us to our next subject that I will talk about in another video the issue of armor penetration and disabling hits for big ships hope you enjoy it and take care